Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and a very warm welcome to Pointless, the game where you are always aiming for the lowest score. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hello, I'm Kitty. This is my lovely friend Georgia, and we're from Oxford. Couple number two. Hello, I'm Deb, and this is my husband David, and we're from Dorset. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Julie, and this is my fabulous sister Catherine, and we're from Jarrow in Tyne and Weir. And finally, couple number four. Hello there, my name's David, this is my wife Marissa, and we're from Woodley, near Reading. And these are today's contestants. Thank you very much indeed, everybody. A very warm welcome to Pointless. It's lovely to have you here. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. He's a diamond geezer, by which I mean he's here to put you all under intense pressure and try to increase your value. It's my Pointless friend, it's Rich. Hiya. Hey, everybody. Um, good afternoon good to afternoon. you. Uh, we keep giving away the jackpot. Giving I know. away a lot recently. We've got to stop. Like, went up crazily oh. for ages and ages, and then, uh, yeah, keep giving it away. And William and Nigel won it last time. Yeah. And Nigel set a new world record for Pointless. Is that he came up with three pointless answers within the first three seconds of his of his sixty, didn't he? It was their words mm. in spy novels. In the end, he only gave two of them. But uh, you know, he did uh, five five seconds, three answers. Not bad going at all. Um, welcome back to our returns, Kitty and Georgia. Your final show today. Fingers crossed, we see a little bit more of you. Uh, and also, final show for David and Deb. Ah. Ah. So we've got two firsters and two thirders. Two firsters, two thirders. Another oh. second insight. Not a second in sight. Welcome no. along to our two firsters. Thank you. Well, Nigel and William, as you gathered, won the jackpot last time, so today's jackpot starts off back at £1,000. There it is. Right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. <laughs> I'm duty-bound to remind you that it will be the pair with the highest score at the end of each round that gets eliminated, so just keep your scores low and everything will be lovely. So, uh, best of luck to everybody. Our first category this afternoon is history by month. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second, and whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> OK, and the question concerns... Historical events that happened in August, Richard. Uh, yep, seven events that happened uh, in August of certain years. Can you tell us what these events are, please? Uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Let's put these things up on the board, shall we? These historic events, here they come. We have got... This ruler of the Mongol Empire died, 18th of August, 1227. Tenochtitlan, the capital of this empire, fell to the Spanish conquistadors, 13th of August, 1521. This Leonardo da Vinci painting was stolen from the Louvre, 21st of August, 1911. This Scottish king was killed in battle by Malcolm, son of Duncan I, 15th of August, 1057. This US president announced his resignation from office, the first man ever to do so, 8th of August, 1974. This British man became the first to swim the English Channel, 25th of August, 1875. And Michel Gabriel Packard and Jacques Balma became the first recorded men to reach the top of this alpine mountain, 8th of August, 1786. There we are. Uh, Georgia, welcome back. Third and final attempt at that pointless trophy. <sighs> Tell us more about yourself. So, I'm a history student at the University of Oxford, um, and I'm the current accommodation and ethics officer of my college, which is just quite a fancy way of saying that I'm in charge of making sure people have rooms for the next year and promoting the environment. So, hang on, the, the, uh, you're in charge of making sure they have rooms? Yeah. I mean, presumably the college has a mechanism for put, uh, allotting rooms to people. It does. And if, if anyone falls through the cracks, they come to you. They do. It's actually just an Excel spreadsheet, and I'm pretty sure I press a button and their names get generated. Do you wander around with a clipboard, making sure people are in the rooms they're meant to be in? I wish, but with it's really not that important. <laughs> You're very involved in the college. I like this. This is, this is commendable, Georgia. Thank now, you. listen, what are you going to go for on our board? So, I haven't studied any of these areas so far, but I think I know a few. Um, but I'm going to go for the second one. Might be a bit of a guess, but I'm going to say the Aztec Empire. Aztec Empire, says Georgia. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Aztec Empire. It is right. It's a great answer. Look at that. Down to 11. Very well done indeed, Georgia. Great start to the show. Very well played, yeah. Hernan Cortez captured that city, uh, which is now Mexico City. 
which is easier for us to pronounce. Tenochtitlan's a bit of a mouthful. Oh, well it? done for having, yeah. having another go. Well, listen, you know. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. how you managed to avoid it. Well. Using a form of words that made you know what I was talking about without me having to say it. Clever, though. Thank Clever. you. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, David C, you've got letters after your name. <laughs> That's what happens when you turn up on three shows on the bounce. Mm. Um, tell us more about yourself, David. Um, well, we've got a small apartment in Spain, so we spend a lot of time there. It's, um, it's on the edge of a golf course, but... Um, Whereabouts in Spain? It's uh, Pilar de la Oredada, which Whereabouts is... Whereabouts on the golf course? Uh, <laughs> far enough away from me, fortunately, um, <laughs> because uh, I've not got a good record with my um, golf. So I've hit a few houses before, but not, not on this course. Very nice. Now, David, what are you going to go for on our board here? Um, yeah, I think I'll play it relatively safe and go for the US president and say Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon, says David. Let's see how many of our 100 people got Richard Nixon, the uh, resigning president. It is right. 11 is the only score we have at the moment, and Richard Nixon lands squarely on 50. There we are. Yeah, he left with two uh, years, more than two years of his term left, Gerald Ford took over. He left because he was going to be impeached and he was mm. certain to be found guilty. So he just, he left instead, he fell on his sword. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Julie, welcome. How lovely to have you here from Jarrow. Thank you. Uh, tell us all about yourself, Julie. I'm a Baptist pastor with a church in South Shields, which is just near Jarrow. Um, and it's uh, really nice. You get to spend time with lots of different people. Uh, try new things. So I now have a YouTube channel, much to the embarrassment of my children. Channel Julie. Very good. Um, so, so that's been very interesting, but I don't like seeing myself on screen. OK, we well, can turn that facility off, presumably. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can just preach yeah. from, uh, <laughs> from, the, from the comfort of your own home. Um, Julie, there you are. What are you going to go for? Oh, it's just a terrible board. Um, I know the really obvious answer. So I think... I'm going to go for that. With it being my first show, I don't want to get 100. Quite right. So I'm going to go for the Leonardo da Vinci one and really hope it's the Mona Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope it's the Mona Lisa. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Mona Lisa. It is the Mona Lisa. That's going to be wrong. And, Julie, that's going down rather further than you might have thought. 60 for the Mona Lisa. Not bad. Yeah, they recovered it two years later. It was a member of the Louvre staff who, uh, who stole it. But Picasso was a suspect for a while. Wow. Um, there we are. Right, now, David Kay, welcome Hello. to Point. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Tell us all about yourself, David Kay. Uh, hi, I am a fitness manager in a popular day spa back in Reading in Berkshire. OK, a day spa. What's, yes. What's that? So it's where people get the chance to uh, come and be pampered for the day. Oh, Lots of see, but they don't stay overnight, I see. Yeah, no. They can no, still wander around time. in a toweling robe. Absolutely. Uh, what obviously, I'm, I'm in the fitness department, so I'm making sure that they are allowed to... Uh, to get back into the spa and enjoy themselves. So you have a lot of people who are members there for yes, that's come right. on a regular basis. And being a manager of fitness means you track, you track from week to week how they're doing, what their fitness levels are, what, their, what so. their body fat or body mass index. Body I don't mass know. index, that's it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Ongoing story in every case. Now, David, you're the last person to have this board. Uh, I think I've got a couple of answers that I've uh, are in my mind. Uh, I th I think the one at the bottom is the obvious one, perhaps Everest. But the one I'm going to go for and take a punt at is the top one, uh, Attila the Hun. OK, you're going to go for Attila the Hun for the top one. Shall we see if that's right? Shall we see how many of our 100 people said it? If it is, is it right, though? Oh, I'm afraid not Attila the Hun, David. Sorry, that scores you 100 points. Hmm. Uh, Attila the 100. Um, yeah, to the Hun. Yeah, to <laughs> uh, the Hun uh, was a Hun, I'm afraid, rather than a Mongol. Uh, and this was, you know, this one, Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan. Yeah, and he would have scored 42. Uh, if you said Everest, I'm afraid that was wrong yeah. as well. It's Alpine Mountain. Mont Blanc. Mont Blanc. Yeah, that would have scored 14. Um, do you remember the first British man to swim the English Channel? No. It's Captain Matthew Webb. Appropriate. Uh, yeah, I suppose so. He scored 17 points. It took him much longer on the way back because uh, he had to carry all the duty free. Um, and the Scottish King. Macbeth. Macbeth, correct. And that would have scored 16. So the best answer on the board there is Aztec. Very well played on podium one. 
Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a quick look at those scores. 11, the best score of the past, Georgia. Very well done indeed for our history undergraduate. There then 50 is where we find David and Deb. 60 is where we find Julie and Catherine. And 100 is where David and Marissa currently reside. Marissa, you get the new board. Use it wisely, find a lovely low score, and you might be with us at the end of the round. Good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? Let us put up more historical events on the board, and these all took place in August. We have got... This famous opera house opened in Milan, 3rd of August, 1778. This US civil rights activist delivered his I Have a Dream speech in Washington, 28th of August, 1963. This city fell to the Visigoths, led by Alaric, 24th of August, 410. This three-day outdoor music festival opened in upstate New York, 15th of August, 1969. This Yorkist king was defeated at the Battle of Bosworth Field by Henry Tudor, 22nd of August, 1485. This African-American athlete won his fourth gold medal at the Berlin Summer Olympics, 9th of August, 1936. And this explorer, born 1451 in Genoa, set sail from Spain to what became known as the New World, 3rd of August, 1492. There we are. Marissa Welcome to Pointless. Lovely to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Hi. Well, I am a lecturer in entrepreneurship at the Henley Business School at the University of Reading. See, that's exciting. Entrepreneurship. I'm presuming you just have to keep updating your, your, your syllabus all the time. Yes, well, it's a constantly moving field and students always want to know more. They're always interested to know what's the next best thing and how they can achieve it because I suppose they all want to be, you know, the next Mark Zuckerberg or something like yeah. that. So, yeah, they're always excited to learn more, that's for sure. And as the lecturer in entrepreneurship, is it, is it sort of honour bound on you to pull up in a new Ferrari every day? <laughs> Shut the keys to someone <laughs> stride in. Uh, uh. No. <laughs> um, now then, Marissa, you are on 100. You've got a lovely fresh board here. Is there yeah. something nice and low scoring on that you think you might be able to make use of? Well, I was kind of thinking of the one below the bottom, but I'm not sure that I want to take the chance, or maybe I should just say, be with my husband and take a chance. So I'm going to try it. I'm going to go for the Olympics. I think it might be Jesse Jackson, is it? Jesse Jackson Maybe. says Marissa. Let's see. Is Jesse Jackson right? No red line. You're currently high scorers. No bad luck. Well, look, that's perfect solidarity. That was very <laughs> lovely of you to, to join David there. Uh, I'm afraid that scores you 100 points. Takes your total up to 200. Exactly. It's exemplary work as a wife, also exemplary work as an entrepreneur, which is you've got to go big sometimes, <laughs> haven't you? You've got to take a risk. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Catherine, welcome. Lovely to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, I'm a nursery manager um, in a nursery that um, I set up with my mum 26 years ago. So Goodness me. So, yes, I've been there quite a while. <laughs> do, do you have staff in your nursery yes. that, that came through as, uh, yes. as children? Yes, we have one who she came when she was a child and now works for us. So How very lovely. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> Good for you. Now, great news. Doesn't matter what you score in this round, Catherine. You are going to be through to the next round. This is good. With that uh, safety net beneath you, do you want to there's... maybe take a bit of a risk here? Oh, I'm going to go. There's a couple I know of, and I'm just trying to think what will be the lowest. I think I'll go for the bottom one. And I think it's Christopher Columbus. Christopher Columbus, says Catherine for the bottom one. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. It is indeed Christopher Columbus. <laughs> Down that goes to 29. Very good indeed. Takes your total up to 89. Uh, yeah, first place they landed it was the Bahamas. Thank you very much. Now then, Deb. Hello. Welcome back to Pointless for your third and final time, I'm sorry mm -hmm. to say. Um, tell us more about yourself, Deb. Uh, well, I'm retired and I've got lots of hobbies, but I really like to forage. Do you? Are you, yes. a, are you, are you a mushroomer? Well, I have done a mushroom course, but it's a bit tricky. It's very difficult to actually identify. Well, this is the trouble. I mean, I'm I've been not... out once with somebody who really... A friend yes. of mine's uncle is a great mushroom expert. And we, we picked all day and went back and he mm. cooked them. But, yeah, you're completely right. I'm not sure I'd have... Yeah. The, I wouldn't have the... It's a bit uh, dangerous, confidence. I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, Deb, you are on 50. Again, it right. doesn't matter what you score. You are through to the next right. round. What are you going to go for? Um, well, I know a few. I'm just going to play it safe and say 
the civil rights activist is Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King says, Deb, no red line, you're already through. How many people said Martin Luther King? It's right. Down it goes to 60, it takes your total up to 110. Safe and sound, well done, yeah. Delivered that speech to uh, over a quarter of a million people at the Lincoln Memorial. Wow. Mm. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Kitty, welcome back. Your Thank third you. and final attempt at mm -hmm. the pointless final as well. Um, tell us all about yourself. So I unicycle, and I was once tricked into unicycling in front of thousands of people. Well, you were practising backstage and suddenly went, Whoa, and on you went, no? It was on a guide camp, and I was, uh, I was unicycling because one of the activities was circus skills. And one of the clowns came over to me, and he was on stilts, so he was very intimidating. And he said, would I perform in a talent show at the end of the week? And I, you know, scared by his size, said, yes, of course. I didn't realise this was actually the final show of the whole camp. <gasps> so all the guides and all the instructors, everyone was there. So you still unicycle? You've, you've, yeah, yeah, oh, I, you do. Do still? I now have a six-foot unicycle. Do you, do you have it in Oxford? Do you no, unicycle around not. to lectures? It's not the most convenient method of transportation. Eye-catching. Yeah. Certainly. Sure. Mm -hmm. There we are. Oh, good for you. Um, mm -hmm. Kitty, you are on 11. Again, it doesn't matter what you score. Yeah. Lovely low score there from Georgia. Do you want to talk us through the board? Um, I would like to. I don't think I can. I'm very much not a history student. Um, I think the only one I can take a guess at is the music festival. Uh, because I know a few American music festivals. I'm going to guess Burning Man. OK, Burning Man says, Kitty, let's see if that's right. No red line for you. You're already through. Is Burning Man right? No, but that's for fine. Burning Man's time, yeah. I think. Uh, that scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 111. I feel very old all of a sudden, do you? I know, I yeah. know. Um, this was... Woodstock. Woodstock uh, was the answer there. And Woodstock would have scored you... 43 points. Uh, now, Marissa, you had to go for risk, not Jesse Jackson, uh, the Reverend Jesse Jackson. Jesse Owens yeah. was the answer. Unlucky. And Jesse Owens was a pretty good scorer, actually. Would have scored you 32 points. Now, the Yorkist King. Richard III. Richard III. Uh, 12 points for Richard III. Uh, do you know the city that fell to the Visigoths? Well, that's the fall of the, the Roman Empire falling then. So, is it Rome? It is Rome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Would have scored you 11. Best answer on the board. And the Opera House? La Scala. You know that. Uh, La Scala. Which would have scored you 16. So, Rome, best answer on the board. Well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed. So, at the end of our first round, the pair we have to say goodbye to with their high score of 200. I'm so sorry, David and Marissa. You've only just got here. We're sending you away, but not too far, because we'll see you again next time and look forward to that very much. Meantime, thank you so much, Marissa and David Kay. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Oh, very well done, everybody. Very well done indeed. Georgia, our history undergraduate, the uh, lowest individual scorer, which I think is meet and right. Um, and then Catherine and Julie, our lowest combined scorers. Welcome to the show. That's the spirit. You hit the ground running. Um, well done, everybody. Best of luck for round two. Our category for it is... TV competitions. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... 2020 Strictly Come Dancing lineup, Richard. Yeah, we're about to show you 16 faces of people who took part in Strictly in 2020, either as uh, the celebrities, the dancers, or the judges. So, who are these people, please? Very good indeed. Thank you, Richard. OK, so we're going to put an image up. That remains up for the entire round. OK, we won't be changing that halfway through. You just have to shout out the name of anyone you see up here. And here comes that image. We've got these lovely people. There we are. Absorb. OK, Kitty. I am not a Strictly watcher, but I am a Made in Chelsea watcher, so I'm going to go for Jamie Lang. Jamie Lang says yes. Kitty. Jamie Lang, let's see how many of our 100 people spotted Jamie Lang. Jamie Lang is right. That takes you down to 16. Very well done, indeed. Good start to the round. Yeah, made it to the final, having survived uh, four dance-offs. He was injured the previous year as well. It's supposed to be in it. Yeah, he was. Um, do you know it's actually pronounced Leng? But he says everyone's pronounced it as Lang for years, so I have no longer tell people anything other than that. Leng. But, uh, yeah. There we go. Thank you. There you are. Um, thank you very much, indeed. Now, Deb. 
Right. I'm not a great Strictly fan. Um, I think I will choose Caroline Quinton. Caroline Quinton, says Deb. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for Caroline Quinton. Absolutely right. Caroline Quentin is up there. 60 is the only score we have. 21 is where you end up with Caroline Quentin. Yeah, well, but it's a relief, this one, that you don't really have had to watch Strictly, do you? Because there's no. just some famous people on the board. But it's, yeah. uh, we, we'll run out of the, the non-Strictly people at some point. Shortly, we surely will. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Catherine. Yes. Are you a Strictly watcher? Yes, I am. Hooray! <laughs> Me and my niece watch it every week. I'm going to go... Oti Mabusi. Oti Mabusi. OK, Oti Mabusi, let's see if that is right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Absolutely right. <laughs> well, 16 is the high score, 21 is the low. 17. There we are, 17 for Oti. Yeah, it's interesting as Strictly has progressed that some of the uh, professional dancers have become more famous than, uh, yeah. than the contestants, and Oti is certainly, uh, certainly one of them. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a great look at those scores. I can tell you, 16 is the best score of the past, Kitty. Very well done indeed. Then we travel up to 17, where we find Catherine and Julie. Then up to 21, where we find Deb and David. So you're a little bit ahead, David, but I think the field is fairly close-knit at this point. So, uh, yeah, but a nice low score from you. We'll even things up. Good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? So remember... All these people took part in Strictly 2020, but who are they? Julie. So, I think... I know the pro dancers, but I don't know surnames. So, I think I'm going to have to go for Nicola Adams. Nicola Adams, says Julie. Here is your red line. You get one, just for reference at this stage. But let's see how many of our 100 people said Nicola Adams. Nicola Adams is absolutely right. And down it goes to 21, taking your total up to 38. Well played, yes, you have to pull out of that year strictly. Fingers crossed you'll be back uh, in a future series, Nicola Adams. I'm sure. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, David. I'm um, struggling a bit here. I'm also not a Strictly fan, but there are some familiar faces, but it's putting names to them, isn't it? Um, so I think I'll go with Anton Lebec. Say that one more time. But my... Anton Lebec. Anton Lebec. OK, Anton Lebec, says David. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Here is your red line. Bad luck, David. I'm sorry, I'm afraid that's incorrect. Scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 121. Sorry, David, can't accept that answer. I'll, uh, I'll tell you why at the end of the pass. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Georgia. You are through, by the way, to the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> it's all looking good. Do you feel like talking us through the board? So I do watch Strictly, so I recognise all these faces. Um, I think Giovanni Fletcher, but I'm not convinced about that. I know Craig Revel Hall is a judge. Um, I think it's Anton Dubeck. Max, I want to say a surname is Weber, but again, I'm not confident enough with that. So I think I'm going to go for Maisie Williams. Maisie Williams yeah. says Georgia. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Maisie Williams. There's no red line for you. You're already through. Oh, no. Not Maisie Williams. Scores you 100 points. Takes your total up to 116. Um, yeah, you're through. Listen, you've, I tell you what you've got a talent for is knowing people's first names and, and getting them mixed up with other people. Uh, <laughs> because you pretty much went through the whole list of them there. Maisie Williams is the Game of Thrones uh, actor. <laughs> and this is Maisie Smith. It would have scored you 10 points. Um, Max Weber is the uh, philosopher. Uh, <laughs> this is Max George out of The Wanted, two, two different people, but it is, it's a Max. Uh, and Max would have scored you three points. Uh, Giovanna Fletcher is the, the winner of I'm a Celebrity, Tom Fletcher's <laughs> wife from McFly. <laughs> this is Giovanni Peniche. Uh, he, he would have scored you uh, three points. And even Craig Revel Hallwood, you call Craig Revel Hall. Uh, so, <laughs> Revel Hall, of course, is where they make Revels. Um, <laughs> Craig Revel Horwood would have scored you 21 points. That was really impressive. I mean, <laughs> with respect, you knew all of them, but uh, that was there's something going on there. There's some kind of genius it's going not on quite. there. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, not Anton Lebec, it's Anton Dubeck, I'm afraid, because he's so recognisable and the second highest scorer on the board. I, I had to take Anton Dubeck, I'm afraid. Anton Dubeck would have scored you 34. Uh, now, 
at the top there, Catcher Jones. Jones is Catcher's surname. She would have scored four points. Top right, Dance with uh, Giovanni. Ranveer Singh. Ranveer Singh, absolutely. She would have scored you 14. Next row down, JJ Chalmers would have scored you four. Bigger scorer on the board. Bill Bailey. Bill Bailey, he danced with uh, OT and one, of course. He would have scored you 60. Now, next to Caroline, dance with Caroline, of course. I think you know the first name, which is Johannes. If it's Johannes Radaby, South African. Johannes Radaby was a pointless answer as well. Well, but if you said that. Jackie Smith. Jackie Smith, absolutely right. She would have scored you four points. And Jamie Lang's partner next to uh, him there, Karen, of course. Karen Hauer. Very well done if you said that at home. Would have scored two points. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, that brings us to the end of our second round. It means we have to say goodbye. Oh, no, David and Deb, this is a final goodbye. Mm. We say this is third time, third and final time. Thank you very much for playing. It's been lovely having you on. I'm thank sorry you. we're not sending you away with a trophy, but uh, thank you very much for coming to play, David and Deb. <laughs> but for the remaining two players, it's now time for the head-to-head. -head. Congratulations, Catherine and Julie, Kitty and Georgie. You are one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £1,000. But before we play the head-to-head, -head, we have an opportunity to build that jackpot up a little bit by seeing if we can find some pointless answers. Here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many works by Samuel Beckett as they could. Richard? Yeah, six works on the board, uh, two pointless answers, two that scored points and two that we made up. So Samuel Beckett or Samuel Beckett. Nice. Thank you very much indeed. OK, let's reveal our six potential Samuel Beckett works. And here they come. We've got Radcliffe, Out of the Blue, Rockabye, Catastrophe, What and Come and Go. Hmm. There we are. I have no I've resources. Got no clue. Oh, I have no clue. This man is. Right, so we've got a third chance. Yeah. So it's going to be Paul <laughs> pulling you towards anything? No. Not at all. I don't think it'll be what? Yeah, nothing. No, I Why? don't. I, do, I don't no. know. I just feel like that would be I have a feeling it might not be parent. rockabye either, but I have no reason. Um, so choose one. Out of the blue. Out of the blue. <laughs> out of the blue. Say, Catherine and Julie. Let's see if out of the blue is a pointless work by Samuel Beckett. No, not out of the blue, as it turns out. OK, Kitty and Georgia, over to you. What are you going to pick? Well, I don't know. We are going to go for Radcliffe. Oh. Radcliffe? Yes. OK, nice uh, Oxford association there. Let's <laughs> yeah. see how many of our 100 people said Radcliffe for a pointless Beckett work. No, well, listen, well done. <laughs> there is as much skill involved in picking the two incorrect ones as there is in picking the pointless ones. So, okay, so it's two shows in a row as well, isn't it? We've yeah. had uh, the two incorrect answers. But, uh, listen, you, have to, you had to give it a go, didn't you? Um, yeah, Daniel Radcliffe starred in Endgame at the old Vic, uh, Samuel Beckett's Endgame. So there's... Uh, if you've got anything on this, or should we I've, just no, pretend it never happened? Let's pretend it never okay. happened. Let's just... So just for people at home, very well done. If you've still got two of your answers up there, I'll tell you right now that the pointless answers were... Rockabye and Catastrophe. Very well done if you said Rockabye and Catastrophe. Come and Go is less than five minutes long. It's a play that's less than five minutes long. That sounds perfect for oh, me. Nice. But if you put all the pauses in, about an hour and a half. <sighs> yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Well, bad luck. We didn't find any pointless answers. But uh, listen, we've had some fun. OK, let's play the head to head. As ever, the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. You are now allowed to confer before you give your answers. And best of luck to both pairs. Our first question is all about flags of countries that begin with the letter N, <laughs> Richard. Yep, five flags now. All the countries they represent begin with the letter N, but what are those countries? OK, what are these countries beginning with N? Here come the flags. We've got A, B, C, D and E. OK. Catherine and Julie, you get to answer first. OK, we're north three of them, so I think we're going to have to go B, Nigeria. B, Nigeria. Say Catherine and Julie. Now, 
Kitty and Georgia, can you talk us through the board? Uh, we think E is Norway. We think that D is Nepal and C might be Nicaragua. But I think we're going to go for D being Nepal. D, Nepal. So we have Nigeria and we have Nepal. Catherine and Julie have gone for Nigeria for B. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. It is Nigeria. That goes down to 33. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kitty and Georgia have gone for Nepal for D. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Nepal. Nepal is right. 33 is what it has to beat. And it does. Very well done indeed. That goes down to 19. Good work, Kitty and Georgia. That means after one question, you're up 1-0. Yeah, let's take a look through the rest of these. Uh, a is... New Zealand. New Zealand, of course. Would have scored you 67 points. B is another fairly big scorer. Of course, it's uh, Norway, as you said, 62 points for that. Uh, and the best answer on the board, not Nicaragua, Nauru. Nauru, an old pointless favourite. Uh, was scored three points. Very well done if you said Nauru. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, here comes your second question now. Catherine and Julie, you've got to win this one to stay in the game, but it's Kitty and Georgia who get to answer it first. So, uh, good luck with that. Our second question is all about... ..bishops. Richard. Yeah, five clues now to facts regarding bishops. Can you give us the most obscure answer, please? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal the five clues, and here they come. We have got sitcom character played by Rowan Atkinson, who in one episode encounters the baby-eating bishop of Bath and Wells, the only direction that a bishop can move in a game of chess, the market town of Bishop Auckland is located in this ceremonial county, Joey Bishop played Mushy O'Connors in this 1960 heist film alongside other members of the Rat Pack, and Madge and Harold Bishop were long-running characters in this soap opera, first transmitted in the UK in 1986. I'll read those clues again. Sitcom character played by Rowan Atkinson, who in one episode encounters the baby-eating bishop of Bath and Wells, the only direction that a bishop can move in a game of chess, the market town of Bishop Auckland is located in this ceremonial county, Joey Bishop played Mushy O'Connors in this 1960 heist film alongside other members of the Rat Pack, and Madge and Harold Bishop were long-running characters in this soap opera, first transmitted in the UK in 1986. Kitty and Georgia will go first. I think we only know the second one. And we think it's diagonal. Diagonal. OK, now, Catherine and Julie, can you talk us through that board? Do you know the top one? I would guess Mr Bean, but... I, I would guess Mr Bean. I don't know. Bishop then Auckland. County Durham. County Durham. Then, then I would be... think the Rat Pack would be um, Ocean's Eleven. Yeah. And then the bottom one's Neighbours. Do you think Durham? Because yeah, it's Durham. Durham. Yeah, we've got to say Durham. Sure, you've got to say Durham. <laughs> Uh, so we've got diagonally versus Durham. Uh, let's see how many of our 100 people said diagonally for the bishop piece on the chessboard. It's right. Goes down to 52. <laughs> bishop Auckland, County Durham, say Catherine and Julie. Let's see how many of our 100 people said County Durham. Absolutely. The land of the Prince Bishops. Down it goes to 18, and it means Catherine and Julie, after two questions, it's one all. You're back in the game. It's a lovely love in between the three of you and the and the northeast there as well. <laughs> that was nice. It was nice to see. Um, now the sitcom character, no, nobody knew it here. Blackadder. Blackadder. Oh, yeah. Um, would have scored you 37. Uh, you're quite right about Ocean's Eleven. Um, would have been a slightly better answer actually. I mean, it doesn't matter. Uh, but would have scored you 14, uh, and you're absolutely right about Neighbours and Neighbours would have scored 53. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. It all comes down to the third question. Whoever wins this one goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot. Best of luck to both pairs. Our third question this afternoon is all about... Shades of green, Richard. Yep, five words for different shades of green now, but we've arranged those words in alphabetical order. But what are these shades of green, please? Thank you very much indeed. So let's reveal our five alphabetical anagrams, and here they come. We've got... I love, Akduv, Akdelno, Adilmer, and Adej. I'm going to read those all again. I love, Akduv, Akdelno, Adilmer, and Adej. And Catherine and Julie will go first. I can't get the second one. Can you? No. No. Um, 
OK. Yeah, yeah, I think I think we'll go with the second one, avocado. Avocado. Say, Catherine and Julie. Now, Kitty and Georgia, can you talk us through that board? So the top one is olive. Uh, fourth is emerald. Fifth is jade. We're not so sure about the third one, but I think we're going to go for emerald. You're going to go for emerald. Uh, so we have avocado versus emerald. Uh, Catherine and Julie went for avocado. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. Avocado is right, goes down to 68. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kitty and Georgia have gone for emerald for the one up from the bottom. Let's see how many of our 100 said emerald. Emerald is absolutely right in the the point for you. Very well done indeed. Oh, that's great. Goes down to 20. That's a great answer. And it means, Kitty and Georgia, after three questions, you are through to the final 2-1. Yeah, very well played. I'm surprised that Olive also beats Avocado. Olive would have scored you 52 points. Can I confess? I saw that and I decided that there was possibly a shade of green called Voile. No. Voile. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow, thank goodness I wasn't having to get Did an you answer. get the bottom one? Jade, yeah, I got yeah. that one. <laughs> That's 90. Nine... They're all over the place on that one. 95 points for Jade. 95 points. Uh, yeah, Actelno, I was. Trying to look at it and work it out, and then I had to look at the answer in the end. I've never heard of it, so that made me feel a bit better okay. about myself. Okay. It's, uh, it's a colour named after a glaze used in Chinese pottery, and it's a celadon. Phew. Celadon. And it's a pointless answer, so very well done if you knew that and said it. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round is Catherine and Julie. My goodness, your first appearance on Pointless. And here you are, the golden couple in the head-to-head -head round. Secretly... I have to confess, I'm glad you're not going through to the final, because it means you come back next time. We get more of you, which would be lovely. Uh, thank you very much for playing. Thank Catherine you. and Julie. Dr <laughs> Kitty in Georgia, now time for the pointless final. <laughs> Congratulations, Kitty and Georgia. You have seen off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot, and at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £1,000. There it is. Well done. You timed that absolutely perfectly. Third appearance on the show, through to the final. Uh, so this is perfect. All we have to do now is uh, find, a, find a pointless answer. We can send you home with that jackpot of £1,000. Um, anything you particularly want to see come up? Maybe something to do with sort of pop music. Yeah. Um, musicals would be all right for me. Mm -hmm. um, that's just, kind of yeah, yeah, those kind of things. You know the kind of things that appear on our board. There'll be there'll be four things, and maybe there'll be something you might feel you can have a go at. We'll see. Um, we can give you these four. Rare breeds of poultry. Mercury Prize winning rap albums. Film clubs. And decades of golf majors. What do we think? Um, definitely oh. not poultry. <laughs> poultry. Um, Rap albums we might have a shot at. Film, Film clubs, clubs? I don't possibly, know but I don't isn't. know what that would yeah, <laughs> yeah. make. And definitely golf not majors. golf majors. No, um, not that. What do you think? I think we'll have to go the rap albums. Really? I mean, oh, if well, you... I, I don't know the others at all. All right, um, we'll go for the Mercury Prize winning rap albums. OK, <laughs> good luck. OK, very best of luck. It's been up uh, here for a while as well, not as long as Rare Breeds of Poultry. But uh, <laughs> we'll look for any of the following, please. Any track on the original release of any of these three Mercury Prize winning albums, please. So any tracks on Dizzy Rascal's Boy in the Corner, any tracks on Skepta's Konnichiwa, or any tracks on Dave's Psychodrama, please. Three great albums. Can you name any tracks on the original releases of any of those three? Very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. So I know Disaster is on Dave's Psychodrama. OK. Um, trying to think what else is on that. Skeptics Can Eat I know Shutdown's on that one. OK. Um, I'm trying to think, oh, my brother used to listen I'm to that album Dave, all the time. But I don't know. Disaster's the only one I would. Um, and then Dizzy Rock, is that the one that's got like um, bonkers on? Yeah. Is it that, that album? One. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, but no, that that's one. tongue in cheek. So actually, I don't know what's on Dizzy Rock. Um, I'm trying to think of more Dave songs. Um, the one about Prime Minister. Ooh. Ooh. I have or, no idea how that one goes. Or the one that was like. Oh, location. Yeah. Location. So I'm thinking location, disaster, and the 
only Skepton I can think of as shut down. I can imagine the album poster. It's got yeah. like a little stamp on it. Let's go for this. Um, I, yeah, I can't think of any other ones. We've got the trophy. Ten seconds left. I can, <laughs> can only think of three, and those are going to have to be the three. Okay. We go with. I okay. Think. Well done. Yeah. Oh, well, should I we think, stop? We're going to stop the clock. Yeah. There we go. Right. Yeah. There we are. Let's have your three answers. What have you got? Um, so we're going to go for disaster and location, which I think are on Dave's album. Okay. And, disaster and location. And shutdown, which is on Skepta. And shutdown. Of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Do you think? Maybe disaster. Okay. Disaster. We'll put last. And I reckon shutdown is probably the most likely. And shutdown is the popular. least likely yeah, to be yeah, pointless. Yeah, yeah. And then disaster shutdown, and then location, location in, the in the middle. Okay, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. We have got shutdown, location, and disaster. Well, if one of these turns out to be pointless and wins you that jackpot, a thousand pounds, that's quite a nice thing to be taking home. What would you like to do with it? Kitty, I'm going to ask you first. Oh, difficult question. I think a holiday is very much in need at the moment. Um, but if not, I'd like to buy a new pet. I wanted a cat. I think it's ridiculous that I'm called Kitty and don't have a cat. So there we are. Got to have a cat. cat okay, yeah. a cat could be on the cards. Georgia, what about you? Um, I don't think my dad allow me to buy a cat. So probably a holiday, maybe Costa Rica. I've always wanted to visit there. So. Okay, Maybe. well, let's see if one of these answers might win that jackpot for you. Your first answer was shut down. In this case, we're looking for tracks on Skepta's Konnichiwa. If shut down is pointless, you leave here with a thousand pounds. How many people said it? Shut down. Shut down is right. Oh, it just has to go all the way down to zero, and you will leave with one thousand pounds. Currently going down through the teens. We're in single figures. Still going down with shut down. Still going down. You've done it. Look at that. <laughs> That's fantastic. Very well done, indeed. Shutdown was a pointless answer, which means you are taking home today's jackpot of £1,000. What about that? Very oh, well played. So handy. Beautifully done. Yeah, your brother, occasionally they are handy. Yeah. You know? But you know what? You didn't actually need him because you knew disaster as well, and that was another pointless answer. So uh, <laughs> you can't take too much of the credit. Um, location, your other answer would have scored four points. So very lucky you didn't say location, 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 otherwise you would <laughs> not have won. Um, let's start with Dizzy Rascal's Boy in the Corner. Fix up, look sharp is a pointless answer. I love that song. Brand new day, just about around we go. The only ones that scored points there were Sitting Here, I Love You, Stop That and Just a Rascal. Everything else was a pointless answer on that one. Um, Skeptus Konnichiwa, an album I don't know as well, I have to uh, confess. Detox and Numbers, they're shut down. Text Me Back as well. Uh, Crime Rhythm and Ladies Hit Squad were also pointless answers. And Dave Psychodrama, which I just think is a magnificent album. Uh, disaster, uh, which you said, Leslie Streatham uh, voices uh, an environment, also a pointless answer. So very well done if you said any of those at home. Uh, and congratulations in the studio. Very well played. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. And thanks once again to our winning players, Kitty and Georgia, who take away today's jackpot of £1,000. Very well done. Thank you. Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>